Today we're diving into a topic that you've probably encountered more times than you realize, propane and butane. They're both popular fuels, they both come in portable cylinders, and they both seem interchangeable at first glance. But are they really the same thing? Not quite. While propane and butane share some similarities, the differences between them are more than just technical details. They affect how we use them, where we use them, and even when we use them. So let's break it down right here on History of Simple Things. To start, both propane and butane belong to a family of gases called liquefied petroleum gases, or LPG for short. That term might sound fancy, but it simply means gases that can be compressed into liquid form for easier storage and transport. If you've ever seen those shiny metal gas canisters at a camping store or attached to a barbecue grill, you've likely been looking at propane or butane, or sometimes even a mix of the two. Chemically, they're pretty close cousins. Propane has three carbon atoms in its molecular chain, while butane has four. That tiny difference in their structure gives them slightly different physical properties, like how easily they evaporate, how much energy they produce when burned, and how well they handle changes in temperature. These subtle differences end up being really important in determining where each fuel is used. Let's talk about propane first. One of propane's standout features is how well it performs in cold weather. Propane evaporates, or boils, at around negative 42 degrees Celsius, which means it turns into a usable gas even in extremely low temperatures. That's why propane tanks are a common sight in snowy campsites, ski resorts, or even in rural homes where propane is used for heating and cooking. Because it works so reliably in the cold, propane has become the go-to choice for outdoor grills, patio heaters, and even backup generators. Another perk of propane is its portability. The pressurized tanks are designed to be refilled and reused, and since propane can handle different climates, it's a very versatile fuel source. If you live in a region that gets real winters, Propane is the friend that doesn't let you down when temperatures drop. Now let's shift to butane. Butane's boiling point is much higher, around negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. That means it stops evaporating properly when the air gets close to freezing. In other words, if you try to use a pure butane lighter or stove in very cold weather, you might be left with a flame that sputters out or doesn't light at all. But that doesn't mean butane is the weaker option. In fact, butane shines in situations where compactness and convenience matter more than cold weather performance. Butane canisters are usually smaller, lighter, and more portable than propane tanks. That's why they're often used in single burner camping stoves, small portable heaters, and those pocket lighters we all carry around. Butane also tends to be a bit cheaper per unit of energy compared to propane, making it an attractive choice for short-term or indoor-friendly applications where storage space is limited. One of the most practical differences between propane and butane comes down to storage and handling. Because propane has a lower boiling point, it needs to be stored in sturdier, thicker walled tanks that can withstand higher pressure. That's why propane tanks tend to look heavier and more industrial. On the other hand, butane is stored at a lower pressure, so the canisters can be made smaller and lighter without compromising safety. This is also why you see propane tanks sitting outside homes and restaurants. They're built to handle the pressure and can safely sit outdoors for months at a time. Butane canisters, meanwhile, are better kept indoors, away from extreme temperatures, which makes them perfect for portable cooking appliances or indoor use where ventilation is available.
Another point of comparison is energy. Both propane and butane pack a lot of punch for their size, but butane actually has a slightly higher energy content by volume. That means if you burn the same volume of each, butane will release a bit more energy. However, this difference doesn't always translate directly into real-world savings, because propane's ability to function in colder environments often makes it the more reliable choice. Cost can also play a role. In many markets, propane is more widely available, especially in colder regions, which can make it more affordable. Butane, being popular in portable applications, might be sold at a premium depending on where you buy it. Ultimately, price often depends on local supply and what the fuel is being used for, rather than one being universally cheaper than the other. So, which one should you use, propane or butane? The answer really depends on your situation. If you're planning a winter camping trip, or you need a fuel source that can handle outdoor conditions year-round, propane is the clear winner. It's versatile, reliable, and doesn't mind the cold. But if you're after something lightweight, portable, and easy to store indoors, butane is your best bet. It's perfect for single-use stoves, lighters, and quick cooking setups where you don't need heavy-duty performance. And for many people, it's not even about choosing one over the other. Sometimes a mix of propane and butane is sold in canisters to balance cold weather performance with compactness. At the end of the day, propane and butane are like siblings similar enough to be mistaken for each other, but with distinct personalities that shine in different situations. Propane is the rugged, all-weather type that thrives outdoors, while butane is the lightweight, convenient option that's great when you don't need to battle the cold. So the next time you're shopping for fuel, whether it's for your barbecue, camping trip, or just refilling a lighter, you'll know the difference. It's not just about which canister looks right, it's about how you plan to use it. And that small choice can make all the difference between a cozy flame and one that fizzles out. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.